DreamTech Splines has a trigger system which lets you trigger events when using Spline Tracer components such as the Spline Follower, Spline Projector or the Spline Positioner. In this scene I have set up a single Spline Follower that follows the spiral spline. If I hit play, it's just gonna go from the start to the spline, towards the end and it's going to stop there. So now I can use this spline follower to trigger events when the follower reaches a certain part of the spline. To do so, I'm gonna need to set up a new trigger. Triggers are set up inside the spline component by expanding the trigger's foldout. I'm going to close edit mode so that it doesn't get in the way. Now inside triggers, we have trigger groups. By default, we have a single trigger group called group 1. If I expand it, I get a not trigger button. And if I click it, I get a trigger positioned at the center of the spline. Now this is not the center of the spline in terms of world units, it's the center of the spline in terms of percent. So 50% translates to around this point here. Inside the trigger we have a bunch of properties. We can either enable it or disable it. We can set it to only work once. And if you do that, you can reset the trigger using code. This is the type of the trigger, which is by default set to double, which means that the trigger can be triggered moving in both directions. If I set it to forward, it's only going to work in one direction and same goes for the backward option. I'm going to leave it to double now. The position as we discussed is the position along the spline and you can also set it by dragging the trigger directly in the scene, which gives you way more precision. Or you can also set a distance. This is a distance from the start of the spline. So the current spline length is 61 units, almost 62. And if you want to, let's say, set the trigger to 20 units from the start, I can type in 20, press enter, and this is gonna place the trigger 20 units from the start. This is length in world units. We also have trigger color. This is just a property that is going to make it easier for you to tell which trigger is what, if you wanna color code them. And of course, the most important part, the events that we're going to be triggering. The trigger system is using unit events, so you should be already familiar with them. To add a new event, we click the plus button, and then we link an object, and they say which function we want to call. For this example, I'm going to be enabling some objects in the scene. So I made a folder here with a bunch of explosions. Those are just some basic particle effects. I have an orange, a yellow, and a green one. I'm gonna go to the spline and hit always draw spline so that I can always see the spline. And position my effects along the spline. So something like that. Now I'm going to disable them, go back to the spline, expand the triggers and put the first trigger somewhere around the placement of the first object. The first one is going to be the orange one, so I'm going to set the color to orange just so I can tell them more easily. I can also rename it to orange. And then I'm gonna drag in the orange object into the object field of the event and select game object, set active and make sure to check the checkbox. There's one more thing we need to do. We need to go to the follower and enable the triggers. So scroll down and click use triggers. Another field will pop up, which is a trigger group. This tells the follower which trigger group we want to use. Currently, we only have a single trigger group, which is this one, which is zero. So we're gonna leave it to zero and play the game and see what happens. There we go. Let's add two more triggers. And of course, we're gonna wanna position them properly. So the yellow one is around here. Let's go and move it. This is a green one, so this one. And let's move the green one all the way to the end of the spline. And this should work. Let's check it out. There we go. So let's see what happens if we set all the triggers to backwards and set the spline followers mode to ping pong. Maybe increase the speed so that we don't have to wait that much. Now let's see how triggers work with the spline projector instead. I'm gonna remove the spline follower component, add a spline projector, link the spline, Check use triggers. And now if I move the object 
the triggers are going to start working. Well, of course, I'm going to need to move it backwards for the triggers to register because they were set to move backwards. But there we go. Now let's see how we can manipulate and add triggers with code. I'll remove all these objects that we created, leaving the spline and the follower, which is now a projector. I'm going to remove the created triggers, go back to the cube, remove the projector, set a follower, so we don't have to move it around manually. Set the speed to 20. And now we can create our first script. I'm gonna call it Trigger Creator. Sounds like a name of a god. I'll attach the Trigger Creator to the spline object because we're going to be working with it and then open Visual Studio. First of all, we need to be using the DreamText Spline's namespace. Then we need to get a reference to the spline computer. And now we can work with triggers. To access the trigger API, we need to access the spline's trigger groups list, which is this one. If I create new groups, I can then list them in the console. So for example, I can go and do this. This is going to print out the names of all created trigger groups. So when I press play, we're gonna get this. And don't mind this, this is something else, not part of this tutorial. I forgot to remove it. We don't need the other two groups, so I'm gonna remove them and just work with the first group. So instead of this, I'm going to get it like this. Once we get the trigger group, we also get access to all the triggers inside the trigger group, so we can create, add or modify triggers. So if I type trigger group dot, I can see a couple of properties and methods. And what I'm interested in is this triggers array here. Setting this array will set all the triggers for this group. I'm going to comment it out for now so that we can create our first trigger. To create a new trigger, we need to create a new spline trigger object. Inside the argument of the constructor, we pass the trigger type. You already know what double is. So we can now name this trigger and then we can pass it inside an array for the trigger group to operate with. Now if I press play, I should get my trigger created inside the trigger group. If I go back to edit mode, this is gonna disappear because whatever happens in runtime stays in runtime. Now of course this trigger doesn't do anything because we never set its event. So let's also do that. We're gonna type trigger. This is what the name of the event is dot add listener we're gonna call it on trigger crossed and of course we need to create this method and just to check if it works inside the method we could always add a log saying I've been triggered let's take out the console put it here so we can see it expand the triggers group so that we can see the trigger when it's created and hit play. And it didn't work for some reason. That's right, I forgot to set use triggers for the follower. Now it should work. And it did. So this was the introduction to triggers in DreamText Plines. If you also want to read about them, you can check out the trigger section in our documentation. And I'll see you in the next video where we're going to learn to use nodes.